welcome to The Connecting Point. I am Dr. Marcy, your facilitator for this discussion today. This is the place where creators connect to inspire, share their ideas and stories, to transform the world through raw and unedited talk. And today I am here with the most talented, gifted, <laughs> Miss Dana Rice. Welcome to the Connecting Point, Dana. Hey, Dr. Marcy. How are you today? I'm feeling fabulous. Yeah, we already said the sun is shining today. We, we, we're loving that sunshine outside. Well, audience and Dana, I must give the Connecting Point. That's the name of this platform. Now, if you look behind her audience, you might be able to figure out a little bit about her before I tell it. If you just look at the wall behind you, you may be able to guess what it is, okay? But she is closely related to what I do myself. <laughs> hint, hint. Well, the connecting point for us would be, has it been about a year or two years ago, Dana? I, I think it's about two. We might be going on three. Yeah, because it was it during the pandemic, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dana and I met at a friend's house, my dear friend of over 25 more years, Dr. Lisa Whittington. Yes. Uh, she called me and said, I want you to meet this beautiful lady and her daughter. Meet me at my house and let's paint. That's what she said. Now, Lisa knows I'm not the best painter, <laughs> but you know, she's an artist. Mm -hmm. So uh, my daughter and I met at Lisa's house and we got a chance to meet Dana and her beautiful daughter Jordan who is also a child star we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute too but that is the connecting point thus the name of this platform <laughs> Dana I've told a little bit so you tell some more tell the audience where you're from and where you are now. All right. Um, before I do that, can I say something about what you just said? Yes. Um, because when we met you in Mahogany, we were painting. And yeah. I'm no painter, right? I love visual art, but mm-mm. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, so it was a little bit intimidating sitting next to Mahogany, who was just, just she's so gifted. And so I was like, oh my God, oh my gosh. But we had such a great time. We so. did. We did. It was a nice time. Yes. Glad to be connected. So I, as she said, as you said, am Dana Rice. Um, a lot of people know me as Dana Rice Music. So all things music, 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 music. That's me. Um, I work with primarily younger children, um, school age children and adults, but primarily school age children. And I call it developing performing artists because mm -hmm. a lot of time, in, most of the time in the music industry, when we talk about develop artist development, we're talking about, you know, they're already on the big stage. But before you can make it to a big stage, you've got to get some training. Yes. So your development actually starts years before you ever get to the point where, you know, somebody in a studio is saying, hey, come work with us. So mm -hmm. that's well, Dana, you've been a little modest. You hadn't said everything, but I. <laughs> okay. I, 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 I'm going to ask. I threw the ball in your court. So like... <laughs> I got the wall back here. So a lot of this, you know. And He's done a whole lot more than that. I am so guilty of it. Um, I think about a year ago, I I had released a, a, a song. And I mean, I'm constantly releasing. But this particular time, I was releasing a song. And a group of people were like, Oh, we didn't know that you wrote songs. We just thought you taught piano and voice. And I was like, oh, no, I need to break it out and show y'all, you know, the, the whole catalog, right? So yes. this is how this wall was born. So I do um, write and sing, and um, I write some books, too. Just any way I can get the communication and the art going, that's what I'm about. But that visual art, I ain't. But you know what? I actually did try my hand at a, a coloring book, too, so... Oh, well, see, see, Dana, you like me. We'll try some stuff. Let, <laughs> try some we'll work. try it now. But, Dana, you know, I'm so proud because the painting we actually did that night, 
It's in my it's in my classroom. And the children say, Dr. Sims, oh, that's good. That's what thank you. Yeah, I think we did good. Now I haven't taken mine to the public. It's on my wall, but <laughs> mine is in my classroom. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. And that's that's where the real judges are. So that's right. And they you. told me it was fine, but they didn't know. We we kind of had it traced out for us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lisa helped us. We're not gonna tell that part. You messing me but, up. Yeah, I I that night we had a good time. Now, Dana, I must tell you, we're killing two birds with one stone, as the old folks say, because this is women's history month. Mm -hmm. And it's also music in our schools month. So we got to work and we might as well go to pull black history in here since we do black history 365, you know, 365 days of the year. So we have a black woman here that does music in the school. So listen, not two birds, three with what song. <laughs> but I am so glad that you're here because you and I, briefly talked about what we need to discuss today didn't we yep it's hot now, and heavy it's heavy it's heavy but i do want to say a little bit more about you yes you're a singer you're a songwriter you're a music instructor you're also a, an ordained minister am i correct you are correct you're an ordained minister and guess what you went to an hbcu am i correct v i love jackson <laughs> state y'all saw us on the super bowl didn't you hey <laughs> Yes, y'all were at the Super Bowl. Yes, back in Usher Raymond up. But yes, so we we have a whole lot in common. And one of those things, yes, is teaching music to young children. Now, Dana, what are the age ranges of the children that you teach? So the youngest that I have generally is four, four years old, mm -hmm. um, all the way through high school and, and college. So Dana has done this. I have done it. Dana's still doing it. I, well, I guess I'm still doing it. You're doing it on a private sector more so than me now uh, because I, I was doing private lessons for years until 2015 and God said switch gears Ooh. and I switched. You keep that energy over there, girl. <laughs> he said, switch gears. And I heard him. So at first, I didn't understand. But I do now. Um, so in our jobs, in our careers, in our gifts, and working with young people, Dana and I have discovered something. We have discovered that our young people, they are being heavily influenced by today's music mm -hmm. now i don't know audience what that means to you i'm sure you already know that that that's not news you know if you've heard anything on the radio on television you know some of those lyrics are just not appropriate for the young folk it may not be appropriate for the old folk. Mm -hmm. What say ye, Dana? <laughs> Listen, I have to have some, you know, stuff in my ears because I can't let it in. It's I be like, Ooh. sometimes I go to the store and you know they playing the music in the store and I'm I'm looking through the clothes or whatever, and all of a sudden I'm like, what does this sound like? Yeah. Well, uh, Dana, I read. That's been about three weeks ago. I think you posted something about that um, on social media. And I immediately said, oh, Dana and I need to talk about this because as educators and, and influential ed educators, we not just know, you know, green or novice educators. We have been doing this for a while. Decades. <laughs> Decades, okay. So I think our voice need to be heard. Our voices need to be heard regarding this. Now, Dana, I can go back in my mind to when I started teaching, uh, which was, oh Lord, oh Lord, <laughs> 1994, somewhere around in there. Okay. <laughs> um, 
And it was so different. How long have you been teaching, Dana? Well, I actually started teaching when I was 12. Mm -hmm. So I've been doing a very long time. Um, but I would say the last 25 years or so has been my most active mm -hmm. in teaching. So I've seen well, things change. I, I'm, I'm going to recall something that just happened to me during the holiday, the winter holidays. Mm. I was doing some um, decluttering of my videos and all that type of thing that I have in my house. And you remember the VHS tapes, right? I still have a VHS player because I got so many memories on VHS tapes that I wasn't ready to depart with. So I popped in some tapes from my early years of teaching. Mm. I was teaching at Grove Park Elementary School in the heart of Atlanta, off Bankhead, highway mm -hmm. and at the time we call that school buckhead on bankhead because we had high expectations and our children were stellar performers academically and artistically now when i popped in the tape my daughter said mama oh they could sing they sound so good and they did. They they really sound like I would equate them to what I hear some high schoolers sound today. Mm -hmm. Yep. In elementary school back then. Mm -hmm. The orchestra even sounded good. And we even had a band that sounded good. I even had African drummers. Yeah, that's Buckhead. On, mm -hmm, it was sure. Buckhead on Bakehead. Now, the reason I'm saying this is because Somewhere along the line, this shifted. Now, the music, when I first got to the school, they had the old books, which I, I hurry up and got rid of those and started just teaching what I knew um, the children needed because some of those books just were not, not going to do it. Mm -hmm. So, but I remember our lyrics were meaningful, uplifting, and our children behaved differently. Yep. Now, I cannot say it's all music, but I can tell you one thing. I bet a great deal of it is as to what is going in their ear gate. Mm -hmm. Now, Dana, what have you heard in the lyrics Honey, I tell you, I, I, I've been going back and forth with, you know, do I display lyrics or because it's, they're just so atrocious. I don't even want to put them out there, but I'll just say the topics, you know, it's a lot of, um, kill yourself. That's in a lot of lyrics mm -hmm. here and a lot of lyrics that I, I see primarily my, um, middle schoolers mm -hmm. are familiar with. Um, there's a lot, of course, there's a lot of sex, mm -hmm. and very graphic descriptions of things. Yes. Happening. Um, there's a lot of, um, hopelessness and, um, just bad behavior all around. Mm. And, uh, I, I recall you talk about how the things have changed. Uh, songs used to be. I mean, you know, there's always been some songs out there, mm -hmm. but um, in general, a song would not um, leave me without hope. Right. So a song might address a problem, but before the end of that song, you're coming out with, but, mm -hmm. <laughs> but this, this could happen. And, mm -hmm. and that's missing now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. So these lyrics, I mean, oh, I, I just challenge people to to just read them. Yeah, read them. Because you will be surprised at what's hidden behind the beat. You know, um, my son, who is a music producer, he will tell me, Mama, 
don't even play that song. It's like he's protecting me from even hear his mother. Now we think, here I am, 53. He said, don't even play that. Yes. Don't even yes. let that go. Because he knows I can't even let my, my, my son said, Mama, I can't even listen to this stuff. And he is a music producer who is young. Now, let's think about the state of our children. Now, I'm in the schools. I'm in two schools. They are very big on TikTok and um, social media, period. The children love it. They love watching YouTube videos of all types of music. And we're not going to even talk about what's going in the eye gate. Let's just, we're going to deal with the ear gate, right? Because <laughs> the eye gate is a whole nother. Next level. Yeah, that, that's a whole nother uh, animal. But um, what they're hearing, they might not totally know what they're hearing, but it's still going in. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying this so that parents who are listening to this type of music, in the presence of your children, they are not at the maturity level to even take that. So if you're in the car and you bang, you think it is nothing going, you know, I'm just vibing to the beat and that baby's in that back seat. That is going into their ear gate, which is ultimately going into the brain. And when you start doing that enough, the brain can trickle down to the heart. So, you know, I, I just, I have a problem with it. It's, it's a problem. I, I'm going to give problem. an example of a, and this song is, is pretty old um, and I think a bit harmless. Okay. But you talk about babies in the backseat. So uh, when my daughter was a baby, um, mm -hmm. I used to drive her and um, my friend's daughter to daycare, right? Mm -hmm. And at that time, you know, Fantasia was just coming out and I um, I loved Baby Mama, mm -hmm. right? Um, because I saw it as a celebration of mamas, right? Mm -hmm. Mothers. And, and knowing her situation, she, you know, was not the same as mine, but the solidarity in motherhood, right? Right. So I'm rocking it. I'm like, B A B A. <laughs> right. And uh, you know, I'm I'm like you say, the, the children are processing it differently than yes, the they are listening. And so I'm I'm you know feeling great. And then um I think when the other little girl's mom picked it up, she was like, Dana, <laughs> you got my daughter want to be a baby mama. We gotta stop this. And uh, but but see, they were latching on to babies yeah. because they were babies. Mm -hmm. And as you say, it gets in you and, and they're not knowing what that really means at the time, right. but it's in there. And so we had to do some, you know, okay, let me go back and make some corrections. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it was necessary and, and thank God we caught it early, but um, yeah, it's like these, um, what they have on the movies, parental guidance. Uh -huh. <laughs> I hate that we have to have that for songs. But we do. when I was growing up, we didn't have it. Mm -hmm. But yeah. there were that. Now let's say this: there were some artists out there back in my day putting out some stuff too. You know, you know my, my daughter said, "Mama, y'all had some stuff too." Now, yes, we did. But one thing about it, my parents said we better not listen to it. <laughs> now let me tell you something: we would have to sneak and listen to it. I was gonna say, did that work? But don't say, don't y'all listen to me. <laughs> we have to sneak and listen to Millie Jackson. Mm. Oh wow, <laughs> that's nothing now. I mean, oh god, Millie Jackson is oh gosh, that's yeah, that's nothing now. But we had to sneak and listen to Red Fox and Richard Pryor. Okay, that's still something, right? There. <laughs> but now it is just out in the. It's like I didn't. Oh, it's nothing. No kind of barrier or anything to hold it back from our children. And quite frankly, adults, we are responsible. Even if they're not your 
biological children, you are responsible for what you're exposing the children to. Mm -hmm. And that's anything. We talk about music, but I'm talking about any. What are you exposing our children to? Mm -hmm. And when I say all, our, I mean all children. What are we, what are we doing? They're, they're ours. All of them are ours. And you know what? The children today, they're the ones that's going to be in charge of our Medicare and Medicaid and senior care. They're going to make those decisions, you know, politically and socially. They're going to make those right. decisions. And it's all going to come based off what we've exposed them to or right. not. And it's kind of desensitizing them. Oh, not kind of. They they're desensitized, okay? Because it doesn't it doesn't hit them. I I got another example. Um, I don't know how much we should be calling out actual artists, but um, no, let's not call out the name. But I'm yeah. not gonna call out artists. But I'm going to say um, again, I have a, I do have a lot of middle school girls, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, we sing, and and sometimes I'll just say, okay, let's let's do a warm up, or they they want to play a song. I think we were doing a a photo shoot, and I was like, well, let's have a playlist while we're taking pictures, right? Mm -hmm. And so the song came up on the playlist that they chose, and oh my gosh, it was about um, killing somebody. It was it was about premeditated murder. But the the melody and the beat didn't seem like like that. Like it didn't go with that it was hidden, yeah. Topic, mm -hmm. um, and so it sounded really nice and whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, they knew every word of the song, and they was just singing this. And I, I didn't really know the song, but I listened to lyrics, and so mm -hmm. I was like appalled. I'm sitting there. Oh no! Turn it off! Turn it off now! And their mothers were there and they were like, you know, and they said, and I was like, y'all help me. And they were like, you help us. So it's, it's a oh. problem. And the, the desensitizing, what I'm saying is the children, they didn't see a problem with it. They didn't think anything was wrong. They weren't appalled at all. And what, you know, words, you're like me, Dana. I listen to the lyrics. Uh, the lyrics hit me first. For me to really like a song, the lyrics got to be heavy. <laughs> it's got to be some good stuff. That's probably why I like Jill Scott. So I love Jill Scott because she's poetic. I love Tupac because of that. Poetic. Um, but when you start hearing those lyrics, it'll turn you off. It'll turn you off if you're not already caught up. So um, I've really gotten to the point where I refuse, like if someone brings me a song, say, oh, you got to listen to this. I say, turn the volume down. Let me see the lyrics first. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want to get caught up into the way it sounds. Right. And, and it's a hook and it's in my head now and I can't get it out. And it's attached to these words. Mm -hmm. So if I don't, if it don't pass the word test, I don't ever listen to it. I'm like, no, I, can't, I only want to go further with it. And you just said something uh, powerful when you said the, the, the music will get in your head. That's how addictive it can be because you can hear a song one time. Come on now. And it'll be in your head all day. And all so, right. so also the lyrics. Because if it's, it's a, a if it's a catchy hook, and when they write songs, they that's what a hook is. It's put there to hook you. I I keep trying to tell people the craft of songwriting. It's it's a serious thing. Like these are not accidents. They're not happenstance. This is planned out. It is purposeful and intentional. We're not. Yeah. I mean, I, all my lyrics. I didn't just say. Hmm, let's just throw this in here. No, I mean, it took sometimes years, sometimes it's a week, days, hours to really think. And you are like pouring over each line of lyric. Mm -hmm. So I, there's no mistake. And oh, it accidentally got in there. No. And there's a reason why it was put there That's to right. get a specific reaction from you. 
And you know, Dana, I one thing that I do now, I've been doing it for years, and I still do it because it works in the classroom, which tells you kids don't really care. They're not thinking about the lyrics. They're they're thinking about the no, music. No. Mm -hmm. uh-huh the track is what they're actually drawn to but then they don't realize those lyrics are going in as well well what I do is I take the song they like I get the track and I write words on top of it and in my mind I'm taking it back so that our children can enjoy the melody the the rhythmic patterns in it but they're going to have different lyrics so now when you hear that song in the car, you're not going to remember that stuff on the radio. You will hear what Dr. Simmons has taught you on top of that. We hope, Dr. Simmons. Well, you know, I, I play this song now. And, it, and I'm it telling you, the original, on. let me tell you something. The original is awful. Lord have mercy. I can't even listen to the original. But every time I turn that song on in my classroom, they jump up and they say these positive lyrics. They see me in the hallway and they say them. So they're going to look at, hopefully what this does is they're seeing, okay, the lyrics that Dr. Simmons taught us. And I tell them what the lyrics mean. Mm -hmm. They're going to know, oh, Dr. Simmons lyrics, they talk about be, having my own purpose and, and walking in my greatness now what is this saying this that's how they're going to be able to decipher between what they should hear and what they shouldn't and that is because i explained the lyrics mm -hmm. so the other stuff they're hearing nobody's explaining the lyrics because yes. let's be honest as an as a parent are you going to want to explain them lyrics to your children if you don't want to then that's an indication they shouldn't be listening to it now period that's funny yeah it's you know we got some parents who will sit there and tell them what it is though but uh <laughs> no, it happens. but uh i like that what you're doing that's that's really important and it's um it's proactive um, and I, I think you touched on, it's like actually teaching, um, critical thinking. Yes. Um, uh, because those other, those, uh, the lyrics they heard first are still there. <laughs> They're still there. If they've if, heard them. Now that's if the If they've heard them. If yeah. they haven't heard them, oh, we doing great. Yeah, we doing real good. But if they have heard them, they're still there. And I'll tell you, I know why, because. I have a lot of stuff. <laughs> I see, like I, I'm always driving with children in the back seat. It's another uh, uh, story about children in the back seat. Different children, mm -hmm. older, different age, and um, we were listening to you know a lot of the songs on maybe like uh, Disney radio or something. Mm -hmm. You know, like a radio station that's catered to kids mm -hmm. where they have taken the popular songs and changed yeah. some words, and so the. I, again, I didn't know the song, so I'm just, you know, I, I feel like if I put it on that station, it would probably be all right. Um, and so the, the I heard them in the back seat talking, and they were saying um, when the the new words came, and they were like, "Oh yeah, these are the these are the watered down words, but the real words are boom 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 bam." And I was like, "We just can't." So those words are in there, but with what you're doing, you're giving some, an alternative. Mm -hmm. And so now they have both things Choice. together and say, you know, okay, this means this and this means that. And then what, what will happen, I think, is one is going to make you feel good inside and one is not. And one is not. <laughs> and yeah. we, we don't want what don't make us feel good. So we kind of shy away from it when we are aware of that. So... But, you know, I even remember this has been, oh, Lord, about 20 years ago. I used to take songs, especially from, like, Arrested, uh, Arrested Development, the group. Mm -hmm. And they had this song called Mr. Wendell. And I would uh, take those lyrics and break them down. We would talk about, do you think I could take a song now off the radio and bring it to the fifth graders and say, let's break this down? And analyze the lyrics. 
No. Not any song that's in the top 100. Mm -mm. No. I can't. And that's sad. I used to be able to pull music from popular songs, bring them into the classroom and analyze them. That is how I did literacy and music. Mm -hmm. Integrating. So now you take those people who are creating these type of songs for, our, for people to listen to, they have taken that aspect out. I remember, and, and this song is very popular. I'm going to mention it because it's very. it was popular back in the day. Um, I know you've heard of Cindy Lauper. Oh, yes. She had, I see your true colors. Okay. Oh, so yes. that song was in the textbooks. Oh. Thanks. It was in the music books when I first started teaching. And so the kids knew it. They'd heard it on the radio, and it was positive. How many songs can we put in the textbooks now? Yeah, I hate that because it has us having to constantly say no. Yeah. As teachers. And that creates a barrier. You know, it's like we just want to have fun with the music, but we they're not presenting us with music that we can have fun with. And I mean, speaking of it, okay, so you're changing you, you know, you're changing lyrics. Can we get those so we can use them? Oh, yeah. I, listen, the book is coming out soon. <laughs> now, okay, now one thing I <laughs> one thing I do, um, <clears throat> I copyright them as I'm going so that I can compile them. However, um, if you wanted to use them, I don't have. Listen, if you're an educator and you need them, call Dr. Mars. I got some. I got plenty. I've been doing it for years. Because, <laughs> you know, um, we're creative, but sometimes we're tired. And yeah. I just be like, oh, my gosh, I wish I had something for this. And I don't. So I, I have I resources. I can't wait for that book. Let me. You got pre-orders <laughs> going on? Huh? Yes. <laughs> yes, honey. I tell you. And it's, it's and the kids love it. They really do. But what we want to kind of move the kids into doing um is doing the same thing I'm doing taking it and re you know that's another thing since we're talking about music being able to reprogram our children back into being creative now that sounds strange doesn't it not to me because I know that's exactly what we have to do and reprogramming is the right word because they they all of us are being programmed to do so many things. And, yep. and it, it seems like we have all these choices being given to us now, but a lot of it is <laughs> you just thinking that you have a choice, but you're being directed to this site, yeah. this site, everybody's getting something different. And you're copying what other, you know, I, I told some students, I said, every time, I see you come, when I say create something, cause I, I like them to create their own movements or something. I said, I see TikTok videos. So what are you actually creating? You're not creating, you are emulating. Now we're not, we're not doing that up here in Dr. Simmons room. We are creators. So let's take, <laughs> you can maximize a movement that you saw, but don't take the whole, you take the whole dance from TikTok and try to do it? Come on now. And it's been some, the last 10, I won't say, yeah, about 10 years. <clears throat> the last 10 years has been uh, very trying for me in having to, like I say, reprogram children into being creators. When that's something we were born with. Mm -hmm. So if we were born with that, why am I having to repro? Why am I having to put that back in unless it was taken out? Mm -hmm. And I equate that to Africans when they came to America. What was the first thing taken? One of the first things taken. That drum. The music. Have no drum. Now, listen, now, don't y'all don't have me go there because I know the research. But they took the music. So they could not communicate. Music is a powerful communication tool. 
it can communicate across the waters. Music can. That's why they call it the universal language. So if you take the communication tool and you taint it, what then are we going to do here in years to come? Matter of fact, what are we going to do now? What else going to do? What else going to do? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I'm serious. This is so, I mean, parents, come on now. Parents. And if you're not a parent that's doing, that's letting your children hear that kind of music, I know we can't control everything. Our children are in the work. They, they go to school. They're around all kinds of people. But it doesn't help if when they get home. They hear the same thing. They think that's normal. They think that's the good the good thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we, we have a lot of, we just, we got empty kids right now because we're not putting the right things into them um mm -hmm. and that emptiness is affecting us greatly yes it is um they're just not i, I just don't know um i think part of the every the personalized listening you know Oh, you got it in your ear and there's never a time where we're all listening to the music out in the open mm -hmm. um that's a problem yes um we really need to start sharing the music again out loud, um, out loud. because when it's too close to our ears i mean that's like it's really getting in there <laughs> yes it really is in there um, we need to share it out more so that we can have the discussions um, and then yeah. so that we can sing together. Um, and that's another thing. The music, a lot of the music is not singable. Oh, that's true, Dana. That's true. It's not, it's not singable. And so I, I don't know. It's just the translation gets lost. It's not singable. They don't. And so everything is just just a beat, just a beat, just, just a, beat. a beat. And when you have that, you can put anything in there. Mm -hmm. And you know, Dana, I remember the shift from when I first started teaching. I played the piano a lot for music class. Mm -hmm. Honey, when the shift occurred and I came out with that piano, they were like, what is that? Mm -hmm. I don't want to play a track, Dr. Simmons. Yep. So now, every now and then I hit a piano. Now the younger kids, thank God, kindergarten, first, yeah. second, they still like the piano. But when you start going to third, fourth, fifth, and beyond, they don't, they said, bring out the track, Dr. Simmons. We want to hear the beat. Mm-hmm. So appreciation for authentic sounds, I think is what we're is we're losing. Yes, authentic sounds. Authentic sounds. I have so many discussions with um students who are trying to mimic artists that they're hearing mm -hmm. and I have to really tell them I hate to inform you that the artist didn't probably <laughs> didn't sing that right it was probably a computer that manipulated the art the artist's mm -hmm. voice so yes. you're over here trying to do it with your voice and it doesn't work and, it's, and <laughs> it's not gonna work but so, I, I mean um Dana do you have a solution? <laughs> I, I, I mean, I'm giving you mine. I'm giving you my my solution for now. Um, yeah, and I, I mean that's why we're talking because I think in the talking there is a solution. You mm -hmm. know, just to bring awareness that hey, 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 everybody, wait a minute, let's see what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because we are educators, we are seeing it right up close and personal. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and so we have to say something. So yeah. thank you for this discussion. Um, what I, One of the things that I've done is, like I say, I require reading the lyrics first. Mm -hmm. And I don't allow, you know, reads while we lit singing, you know, no. We're going to read it like a book or like an article mm -hmm. so that we can really understand that a message is being given. This is communication. It's communication. Lyrics are communication. And I think that's the first thing. It's not being seen that way. Right. It not only now let's let's see if we go there, Dana. You know, we, we have a lot of um over the years reading endorsements and taught such things in the school system. And music teachers are asked to come out of what they're doing to go teach a reading class. I remember <clears throat> this has been years ago when they first brought this reading endorsement in and we were going to be pulled from our classrooms to teach reading. Now, I don't have a degree in that. My degree is in music. Mm -hmm. So me, I'm a risk taker. I've always been one. I said, wait a minute. If I'm in here reading lyrics and having children read through these lyrics and let's get the context of where the lyrics are coming from, um, underlining words that are difficult for us. I'm already teaching reading. Okay. I took that to the administrator at the time. She agreed. Okay. And so I didn't, I wasn't pulled. I just did my, my, what I do. Now, a lot of administrators did not understand that. And so now we need to go back and look at this. Music, lyrics to songs, that is a way of teaching literacy. Absolutely. Actually, that is... It's uh, the highest form. That's what I'm getting ready to say, <laughs> especially in the African-American experience. Yes. This is how literacy was, was trans transported, you know, from generation to generation because of the laws against reading. Uh, yes. And so it was through the lyrics of songs that you know the the literacy came about reading comprehension come on now listen this is what is needed in our schools because you we, we keep talking about reading we, they have a bill out now that we got to change up again okay how we're doing things the old way wasn't wrong it wasn't wrong now, we started trying to do a lot of changing, and we've come away from the foundation that really helps children learn how to read. And if you mix that reading with something they like to do to express themselves, you are that's a secret sauce. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we, we probably need to look, I ain't going to say probably, we do need to look at how can music, how can dance, how can art help with literacy? Not pulling those teachers from their craft and what they do to teach some subject they have not even been trained in. Let them use what God has given them as art specialists to teach through that, which is called arts integration. And it's actually recognizing that that's what we're doing anyway. Right. Recognizing then the, the lack of recognition of the arts is atrocious. It is. And the value that it brings. And part of why we're seeing this degradation of society is because the arts have been mm -hmm. diminished mm -hmm. all the time. Um, because there's really no way to teach an art form without literacy. Without that's right. It, without even math the uh, you need it all yeah. yeah all of it is in there it's you in know there. physics is in there because there's movements i mean so what are we doing right we, we gotta quit quit playing around <laughs> we gotta yeah. quit playing around with this and, and, and if you don't know ask the folk who do know i know they know. knows <laughs> we know and there are many other people who know 
We know what's going to help these children excel academically through the arts. You're not going to be, uh, Dana, I've been saying this for years. I don't know if it, I don't think anybody was listening, but I've been saying it for, I know, 20 years. If we would just take the way that we're structuring education, put the arts as the core, and let every other subject branch from that, watch how it turns around. That's all That's I'm going to say. The right core here. is the arts. Y'all trying to make the core math and reading and then us. No, you better go around the other way. The core is the arts and let all your other subjects branch out from that. We need a t-shirt, Dr. Marcy. We need a t-shirt. Listen, hey, <laughs> listen, I'm, I'm serious. One day That's they're going to listen to me. Well, let, let me help them. This is it. The answer is right here. Um, the they go, they go here. One day I've been preaching it for years to every principal I can preach it to. Start with the core, which is the arts. You know why it's the core? Because our creator, God, is the master artist. Let me say, I ain't going to even go there. That's even deeper. I can't go that deep. <laughs> They go, listen, this that is deep. It, it's why deep. that is necessary. It's necessary, you know. Our our whole being is the arts. You like it's the arts. You, there's a beat from the beginning. <laughs> the heart beats. There's a beat from the very beginning. You the know? forming of man and a form form is an artistic word. Come on now. It is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What well, come on, people? So I guess we gotta ask, like, who benefits from these the way things are? Who who benefits? Obviously, it's not our children. Mm -mm. Um, who is benefiting from that? And we gotta address that. Um, mm -hmm. Shed some light on it. Like, take the take the cover off. Take like, the cover ah. off. who is benefiting? Now, I do know there's a scripture that's coming to my mind right now. Anyone who hurts one of these children is, uh, what's that milestone on your neck and cast them to it? Uh-huh. I, I don't want a milestone on my neck. Nope, don't need that. Don't so want I'm it. I'm not going to do anything knowingly to hurt these babies mm -mm. now if you don't know that's a different but when you know you are held accountable to do what's right by these children mm -hmm. we and can't. we can't just stand around and watch and don't say and don't do anything and don't do anything you know um we have to give the children what they need and the earlier the better when they come they're usually just wide open and ready for the positivity yes they are all of a sudden something happens around four fifth six grade right. there's something happens that's a shift mm -hmm. there's a shift and we've got to get a hold on to that yeah oh they know i tell you now, I, I, one more thing. Go I think ahead. a lot of it has to do with, um, again, like I say, the the togetherness um, of of everybody enjoying the same songs. Mm -hmm. um, not not oh, you got the kitty songs for them, and the grown folks only want to do this stuff. But but kids don't really always want super kitty things. Mm -hmm. There there are there are songs that we can enjoy together, just as people. Where right. are those songs? <laughs> right. Where are the earth, winds, and fires? <laughs> Where are the freaking Beverly, Beverly and Mays? They, I, well, we can all enjoy. That's why they're family reunion songs. They call them family reunion songs because everybody can listen to them. Yeah. And not feel guilty. Right. Oh, because the cringing, you know, <laughs> you're like, <"Ooh." laughs> you know, my, my church every year in November, they have, uh, anniversary and they do the four generations 
They do a before Christ. What were you listening to before Christ and after you after Christ? So the before Christ song is always some, you know, for my generation, of course, that earth, wind and fire and all this. It is always difficult. The pastor says it's always difficult to find a song for the younger generation before Christ because of the lyrics. Now that's bad. The church can't find a song to play for before Christ for the children because of the lyrics. We got to give them something different. You know, uh -huh. um, these songs, I, I saw somebody said, oh, well, you know, it's not all bad because it's like more real and more honest. And I'm like, well, just, just like some of those things can be some people's lived experience. But there's also the opposite that is also true. God is. And uh, not everything is back. Just, you know, there's an opposite of everything. So right. you're giving us all the bad as if this is all there is. And that's just not true. It's not true. We've got to highlight the truth. At the you know the whole truth, the whole truth. not just you know something bad happened to you today. Okay, but something good happened as well. That's right. <laughs> you know. You no, know, I I often tell children. I said, listen, I don't want you to think this is normal. And when I say that, I'm looking at their what they're bringing to the school sometimes as normal behavior. Mm -hmm. I said, let me tell you. Let me be honest, that's not normal. It's not normal to call each other names. It's not right. normal to feel bad. God don't want us to feel bad. It's not normal. But if, if our children are desensitized by the music, they think, oh, that's just normal. It's not it normal. It's mm -hmm. not healthy. Yeah, I love that. It's not normal. I need a sign with it. Yeah, because the children don't know unless we tell them. If they're waking up to these sounds, they're being driven to school in these sounds, they say, oh, this just normal. If they hear it in the neighborhood, oh, this just normal. It's not normal. I like that. Dr. Marcy, you got it going on here. <laughs> no, honey. God's, God's got it going on. I'm just an instrument. Because I'm just, you know, it's it's getting it's it's pretty bad, people. It's pretty bad. What I'm I'm in there. Dana's in there. We work with the children. We see it. Yeah. It's, and it's then bad. we want to wonder why our children are gang banging. Why our children doing all these having sex too early? Why why are they doing this? It's because of what you're exposing them to. Mm -hmm. Yes. And there's all this name calling and giving them a cell phone in first grade and second grade. Where do they do that, people? Huh? They don't, children don't know how to um, not watch. If you give them a cell phone, yes, they're going to find it. Everything is there. It's all there. They're going to find you know, it. It's just like a spoonful of poison. Why would we give that to a baby? But that's what we're doing. I see second graders with a cell phone. For and what? I'm thinking to myself, really? What? What do they what do they need it for? There's some things that should be kept until they reach certain ages. Mm -hmm. Their little minds cannot handle it. There's why, why do you think there's milk for babies? Because they can't handle solid food yet. It's the same process. They're not able to handle some of the lyrics in these songs. Parents, you might be able to handle it. Let's but I really don't it. think you can no. either. No. <laughs> and you know, I really, I really don't. Because a lot of things, if we're taking somebody else's ideas on as our own and making that your life experience, and you don't know nothing about that, but you're singing it, it's crazy. We got to stop it. But um, creativity, uh, you know, you mentioned earlier about the, they don't know how to create. They don't, our children are losing. Got to teach them how to create again. Create things. Well, one of the things is creativity takes time and space. Yes. 
And that's something we're not allowed to have because we've got messages coming all the time at us, notifications, messages, something's always going on. And, and there's no time to just be still. Mm. Dana, it's, it's, oh, it's amazing you said that. Just today, I had a class and I, I observe, I sometimes watch. A lot of people don't understand my method for doing certain things, but I'm watching. And a lot of times, yes, I'm letting them be free because they caged up all day long. And I'm going to give them a moment of freedom in my room because I think it's important. But today I asked them to sit down and then I said, how many of you take at least five minutes to sit with yourself? And they looked at me like, you, we sit there and watch TV. I said, mm -mm. I mean, sit in silence with yourself. And they looked at me like, what are you talking about? Can you imagine someone going day in and day out and day, and there's no silence? That's dangerous. It's like a ticking bomb. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, we're going to try it for at least 60 seconds. Just mm -hmm. sit with yourself. And they looking at me like, what is this lady doing? But to me, that 60 seconds was important for me to do for them today because they were just, their little minds were, and they weren't being bad. They were just, I, I just, in the room, it was so, you could tell they're, they're just all over the place mentally. Mentally all over the place. Mm -hmm. And then we expect them to sit down and absorb what they're being taught in the classroom. They're not absorbing anything. They are just sitting there while teachers are talking. <laughs> you know it. That's what's happening. Mm -hmm. But Dana, this is this is a um something I'm passionate about. So I could go on and on. I'm not gonna do that tonight. Hopefully the audience, hopefully the audience got the message. In case you didn't get it, let me break it down. Break it down, break it down. Stop playing that mess in our children's ear. And that's it. Now, if you're gonna do it, you grown, you do it. Stop doing it and after tonight after you watch this you now accountable because you know mm -hmm. see when god know you heard it you are now accountable so if you listen to this podcast to this point you are now accountable for what you are doing in front of these babies and what you're allowing them to hear and see mm -hmm. You Stop. are held accountable, not by Dr. Marcy, but by God himself. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to let that marinate. Dana. <laughs> Dana. <Yeah. laughs> You're on the connected point, so now you have to leave a point to ponder, Dana. <laughs> oh, my gosh. How can I come behind that? Oh. This is my point to ponder. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. What you see. Oh, be careful, little ears, what you hear. Mm. For the Father up above is looking down in love. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. And what we've been talking about is the ears. The ears. Be careful what you hear. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a song, y'all. Go find out how it sounds. Dana just quoted the lyrics to a song. Mm -hmm. I learned that when I was a little girl. Yep. And I still use it for myself. Mm -hmm. Like, uh-oh, be careful. You still you remember see. it's in there. Be what you see. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's in there. Y'all get that point to ponder? Okay. Dana, we didn't even get deep into <laughs> They Dana's gonna know. come back. She, we got. She's gonna come back and do some other stuff. I, I, I'm gonna have you come back, Dana. Yay. Dana, thank you so much for having this discussion with me, and it's well needed. 
Thank you. I just, I got to tell you, Dr. Marcy, I've been sitting over here, uh, seeing you on social media. I'm like, I want to talk to Dr. Marcy. I'm going to talk to Dr. Marcy. Well, you should have, I knew you had to do was reach out to me, Dana. <laughs> I'm so glad we got a chance to do this today. We're going to do it again, but when you come back, we're going to talk about all this stuff on the back of that wall back there. All right, we talk about that. Because you, Dana, also, oh, let me mention this. You have affirmations, musical affirmations. Talk about that a little bit, please. I can't believe I didn't mention that because- Yeah, because that's important. What Actually, what we've been talking about is the reason why yeah. I came up, I wrote this album of affirmations um, to give- our children and ourselves uh some positiveness you know there's one that says my creativity is endless mm. we're feeling like we can't be creative because we're boxed in but but then that affirmation says it's endless it's endless, endless. um there's one that says i'm good at what i do because there's so many times when we feel like we're not good enough and mm. and then there's one that says i'm more than enough i'm whoop. My but cup my run, it's over. Ah, my favorite one, it starts with, I'm going to love me. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, because everything starts there. It starts. When we love ourselves, then we know how to love each other correctly. Absolutely. And then Absolutely. We, we know what to let in our ears when we love ourselves the right mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. So affirmations is streaming everywhere, Spotify, Apple Music, all the places. And, and educators, yeah. it would be something good to have in your classroom as children are coming in. They don't have to just come to the music room to get music now. Mm -hmm. Oh, and there's a little affirmations book that goes with the album. So, uh, Do you hear that? And you can download that at DanaRiceMusic.com. There it is. Y'all need resources. There they are. They're in your lap. Dana, how can people reach you? So I I do this for myself to make it easy for me to find me. So I hope it's easy for you all. I'm at Dana Rice Music everywhere. So if you're on Instagram at Dana Rice Music, Facebook at Dana Rice Music. Dana so Rice Music. DanaRiceMusic.com. So Dana Rice Music. D-A-N-A. D-A-N-A Rice. White Rice, Spicy Rice, Brown Rice, Wild Rice. It's all Rice. <laughs> Rice Krispies. See, yeah. Dana and I make up stuff. See, listen, <laughs> that's what creativity is all about. You got to be able to make it up. Mm -hmm. Make it up. Dana, thank you again for taking this time out to talk today. Thank I you. I appreciate so you, honey. I appreciate you. And thank like you. I say every week, if you'd like to be a part of the Connecting Point discussion, reach out to me at drmarcyts at gmail.com or go to the website at Dr. Marcy's Connections and fill out a form. You can also come join a group called the Connecting Point for Creators Group on Facebook. Dana's a member. Yeah. yeah, it's just a point of contact for creators of all kind to network, to promote, and to receive daily inspiration. That's it. No pressure. Some people just come just to watch and see what everybody else doing. That's okay too. If that's what you, if that's something that'll motivate you, we're good with that too. Just send us a request to join. We would love to have you. This show airs on Tuesday nights. Now it was on Instagram TV, but they're doing something kind of funny. I don't know what they're doing, but now you can go to Instagram and click the link to YouTube. So it's a little different now. But it's on YouTube as well. You also can get it on Facebook and Twitter. You'll be able to find it. On Wednesday nights, KBCN TV, Spotify, and Anchor. All that I ask is you share it. Share, share, share. So others can be inspired. All right, audience. Until we get this moment again, peace and blessings. And watch what you hear. All right, bye-bye. I am here to invite each of you to share your amazing stories with me and the global audience. What does that mean? Well, that means I'm looking for testimonies of the goodness of God and what he's done for you 
that you know will inspire and uplift others and transform lives. If that sounds like you, please reach out to me at drmarcyts at gmail.com or you may go to the website, Dr. Marcy's Connections, and fill out a form. Simple, simple as that. Let's go ahead and share our testimonies with the world because this is the year of the testimony. I'm looking for you. Go ahead now, let's connect. <music>